So if you have a security DVR, surveillance DVR, and you have a Zomoto or LA View or Bunker Hill or several others, um, and it has a, a RS-485 input, that's a two-pin connector on the back which can, can connect to a uh, variety of things. In this case, for a surveillance DVR, it connects to um, pan and tilt cameras. You know, if you have an eight eight camera system, obviously something like this would be handy. You know, you, just just normal cameras, you just mount them still; they only point in one direction. The pan and tilt allows you to basically pan and tilt. So, um, if you if you have a eight camera system and you want eight pan and tilt arms, <laughs> um, it can be kind of expensive. They're very expensive. Um, there are cheaper solutions to them, but then again, there's a price to pay be paid for that. These, this is kind of a ubiquitous seen everywhere uh, pan uh, tilt controller that you see it on eBay you see it on AliExpress you can buy them for eight eight at a time that's where it gets cheap and the only hang up with these is um, they usually uh, they come default channel one you know camera one and uh, a lot of people just do that they just have one pan tilt I mean pan tilt camera in their system and the rest of them are all fixed well if you want to use the other eight channels um, you have to know how to program them because uh, that's not usually that's that's not done through the the surveillance of DVR. You can't program the camera IDs, and that's what you need to do to be able to use more than one. The reason why is that all these uh, uh, pan and zooms, I mean pan and tilts, they all sit on the same communications bus. Which you know, in this case, is this uh, these two wires here that come out the back of this uh, handheld uh, programming controller. And uh, normally they're blue and yellow. The blue is positive and yellow is minus, which I'll mention later is important. You need to make sure you figure that out when you hook all this up. Um, that basically provides uh, the signal, not the power. The power comes in on another connection, similar to your cameras. And they usually you piggyback in on that with a split Y. So these basically are, are autonomous. Um, I've bought lots of them and used them. They're rugged. I've never had to replace one. I don't care what kind of winter weather you have, wet weather, hot weather. They work all the time, which is kind of amazing because how cheap they are. Uh, you can get them for like $14, $15 a piece. So the problem is, like I said, if you wanted to have uh, eight of them in a system, you only know how to program them. Now, some Chinese vendors will you know, program them for you for a cost. I've never tried that. The problem is, is that... You know, if something happens, and I'm not sure what that would be, uh, if you get a power spike or something, these things, do they manually reset, or you get into a situation where you've got cameras that are misbehaving, you have to reprogram them, you know, these these uh, pan tilts, you know, are you going to have to reprogram them? Well, in my case, uh, I'm an engineer, so yeah, I want to go have the, have the control around here, so if even if I seasonally wanted to move cameras around, I could reprogram them from, you know, where they, the wires come in to the back of the surveillance DVR, I could reprogram them. You know, for seasonal use. If I had a camera that wasn't used certain times of the year, I could just move that address somewhere else. Um, now, in this instance, what you have for, for this kind of a um, pan and tilt is when you turn it over, you've got obviously a little board in here and some wires. And um, this, and, and like I said, this uh, the lid that goes on this <laughs> just basically tells you the communications protocol, which is uh, Pelco D, which is Pelco was a company from the 50s that originally started a lot of these um, surveillance cameras. Pelco D is a 70s, 1970s, 1980s kind of protocol, hand-to-hand um, -hand combat, 12-volt unit. Um, this little board in here. There's also there's a the jumper connection in here. Um, the two pins on this are to actually talk to it with you know serial and protocol analyzers, which I'm used to using. I don't have one right now because I don't do this kind of work this often anymore. Um, and basically, this is kind of a small board here. There's no way to go in here. You, you might pop this open. There was a dip switch in here I can do, and there's a little manual for this. There's no manual <laughs> that comes for this. Okay, so you buy this from eBay. You buy these from AliExpress. It just comes, and there's no manual for it. You know, what you get is the wiring harness, you know, which is, which is back here. And uh, it just has the, the Y split out. For the power and ground, and it's all got your uh, RS-485, which is a, a multi-drop uh, physical link, and you can hook like as many cameras as you want on this, relative to uh, an issue I will talk about. Um, now, since the, since you know you can get them programmed by Chinese manufacturer, none of the eBay manufacturers I know of will program them for you. 
um, you know, you need to do it yourself. And that's what I'm explaining to you right now is how to utilize these really low cost, really low cost uh, pan and tilt um, camera mounts. And, uh, you know, you make, make use of all your cameras and not have to pay like, you know, 100, 200 bucks for each uh, pan tilt mount. <laughs> um, one, one other uh, interesting thing about the way I'm doing this is another thing I'll set you back in price is this little puppy here. If you want to mount it on a corner, like you've got an aluminum barn or up in a soffit, you know, you could paint this. Um, I did this. Normally, corner mounts like this are 40, 50 bucks. Sometimes you can get them for 30. That's a lot of money. That's <laughs> like two or three times the cost of this, 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 you know, arm, this uh, mounting arm. So uh, I've come up with an interesting way, and if you can see it, I'm not quite sure um, the number on this. This is a, a sim. Um, a Simpson and it's a uh, this is the, right there I think you can read it if I get the shine off of it that is the uh, the number of this piece you can see it it's uh, RTA 2Z and it's a uh, Simpson get the shine off of it again it's a Zim, it's a Simpson uh, corner tie for uh, roughing in lumber basically for two befores and it's structural tie. So what I've done here is I've taken two of these and um, screwed them together and then made a mount here. It's, this is the awkward part. You have to kind of make sure that, you know, when you're screwing into the plastic mount itself of the, of the camera mount that you're not screwing into wires and stuff. But I've actually just screwed into the two, the two holes that were available in this, this normal sheet metal piece, folded sheet metal piece, just put two machine screws in, have this mounting. And, um, you know, I, this costs like three dollars to make maybe about five or six minutes to drill holes and screw it together so it makes a fairly good amount for these kind and that's why i said these things are ubiquitous so you know when i'm talking about doing something like this <laughs> this will fit all of them there's they these have been dumped on the market for years they're very cheap if you buy them made at a time the only hang up is is the mounting you know well okay you can make one or you can buy one and the programming if you want to use multiples because they they come default address zero i mean sorry address one so if you want to use multiples you've got to program them and that's where this comes in and this is a little interesting uh programmer it's a basically they call it a a, a joystick controller board and uh what this thing does is um let's see this is uh you can see the you can see the move a little bit you can see the head moving around when I turn this from right to left, so, and uh, this camera ID right now is listed as 255. Um, one, one of the issues that you have is these are default uh, camera one, so you have to change that. You have to reprogram that, and the keying sequence for that is real simple. Um, that's if you understand POCO control language, which I didn't when I started, but I looked it up and figured it out. If you take the hex commands and figure out you know what you need to do to actually program the non-volatile memory in this unit <laughs> yeah you look at the chart it's in hex and you can figure out what the command is or at least what it's supposed to do and from these buttons on here and the commands in the command in the command manual if you're familiar with this kind of protocol telco d uh, you can figure out what command will actually put the camera id in it's not listed <laughs> it's not listed and the sequence i'm showing you here is I've not found it yet. This is one that I actually had to look in the, the hex table for the actual command you send with a serial protocol analyzer. And not this thing. This is Huggy Kissy. And, you know, I've had to translate that. If you buy this unit, you can program these as the short story. Now, this is a unit that's made by a whole bunch of people. It's just like this unit here. It's a, it's a very ubiquitous uh, piece of hardware. You can find it on eBay. You can find it on AliExpress. And uh, you flip it over. There's no model number underneath there. This has no model number on it. It comes with the manual that looks like this. And it's written in Chinese English. So you kind of have to, you know, read and try to figure out what they're trying to say. And once again, if you're familiar with doing this, uh, it's a little bit easier. That's why I wanted to make this video so it can really be easy for you if you want to try this. You get a controller like this, and they're usually about 30 bucks. Um, go ahead and get, you know, <laughs> buy one of these, you know, so you can experiment with it and get comfortable with it. Because you don't want to buy eight of them. If you want to do this kind of thing and, and you're not going to be able to do it, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident you can do this with any of these connect controllers that look just like this. You have to, you have to say, yeah, it looks like this. I'm going to buy this <laughs> and you have to look, this it looks like this. I'm going to buy this. And trust me for these two types of units, you know, just by the way they look, they are basically the same unit. There's no model numbers on the back. There's nothing. But, like I said, what do you want for 14 bucks? And they're fairly easy to use. I have not had a problem with them, and I've got them all over the place. So I've got like 16 of them. Um, 
to program these. Um, Yay! You know, the, the one thing that you have to set up for is this one here, most of them, for Palco D, it's, uh, unless I can get it back to the original screen. Shift, no clear. Okay. Um, the, there's, a, there's a symbol on the screen that says the uh, BR baud rate 2400, and they are 2400, and I can't remember, I think it's 8, it's uh, 8 bits, 1 parity bit, if I remember correctly. But you, see, you, don't, you don't have to set that in here. Um, for Palco D, it's automatically set up, and in this case, you're fine. Um, if you get into some cameras and you have to set the, the baud, it's usually 8 bits, uh, 1 bit parity, um, usually, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong on that. Uh, if I am, somebody else who watches this video can correct that, who's familiar with Pelco D or whatever. So, you know, here you are, you've got your, 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 your ubiquitous controller, and you've got your little, you know, um, pan tilt arm. Now to program it, um, it comes to fault, um, it comes to fault uh, one, you know, channel one, camera one. And uh, I'm going to do something here that you just, you know, ignore. Um, well, I'll tell you what, it's on 255 now. Um, and you can see it's moving around. Now, in order to program it, you have to have it on the channel and running. Okay, so if it's on 255, so you've got 255 cameras now. I uh, hope not. So anyway, um, you have to have it on and running. So the objective view of this controller looking at this is camera 255, let's say, in this inches. Uh, so what you do is you have to say, you put in uh, 25 preset. Okay. That actually... Is the command that tells it you know the status protocol 25 you're going to make a change in non-volatile memory that's the camera id go try to find that in the damn pelco table anyway once you get there now you have to enter the camera number you want to change this to it was 255 now you want to change it to four so i do four and empty preset okay that's it <laughs> if everything's right i should be able to go ahead and hit four and then camera okay and it should work there you go so that's it's just that simple um, there's a couple caveats. Okay, you're sitting here while they're pushing numbers. Make sure you read the screen before you push, you know, preset. You know, 225 preset puts it in the mode where you can change the camera ID. And obviously when you hit the second sequence, sequence of 4 and then preset, that sets it to camera 4. Now, if you, you know, look to make sure it's 4 on the screen before you hit preset. because And if it isn't, you hit, hit clear. Okay? Because if you program this to an ID that you can't remember... There, as, I, as I've been able to find out from this console, which is, you know, there is no way to reset it back to factory default. Um, so what you have to do <laughs> is you have to guess. And I did this accidentally. And fortunately, I think I got it on 9. So I had to guess all the way up to camera 9 before it started working. And I was like, oh, whew, never do that again. So you're going to be careful when you're programming these IDs. This is a, you know, a rough and tumble protocol. <clears throat> it wasn't, you know, layered and huggy kissy. It wasn't meant for... You know, people who want to go low and dirty, buy the bunch of these and buy eight of them, buy a controller, program them, put them up. It's, uh, you know, that's it's, it's kind of a, you know, uh, nuts and bolts, hand-to-hand -hand way of doing it. But, you know, if you're able, you can save a lot of money. You can save four or five hundred bucks. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. The sequence that I showed you is the sequence you need. And like I said, when you... Um, Yay! What you usually have is... When you start up, they're camera one. And you can see this is camera one, and like this. And like I said, when you want to change the ID on it, you just have to say the command code for setting status port, or status, status port uh, 25. And then you have to do f uh, four preset. And then that basically makes it four. Now I've, cha I've changed it from camera one to camera four. Now, see, this is not working anymore. Well, you know, I just changed it to camera four. So you have to go to camera four. So you sit four camera. And now I'm, I'm here. So this basically is a, a really cheap, easy way. Considering the cost of eight normal pan and zooms. <laughs> kind of expensive. Um, so you can kind of bypass for the people who have pan and zooms that sell them with their systems. Yeah, pretty pricey. But, you know, you can make your own this way. So I just want to kind of put this all together so you kind of know how to, um, you know, do this. And if, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and post them. I may not be able to answer them because I'm not an uh, expert on Pelco D. If you um, run those kind of 
things in the past. Um, I built my first computer when I was 14 back in the 70s when there wasn't any computer. So, you know, I grew up with all this crap, so it just kind of is innate. I can look at crap and find out, yeah, what what codes they're using to try to get into the non-volatile memory to do what I just showed you. So I'm distilling all that down so I can help you do it simply. And, you know, pushing four sets of buttons on this is pretty simple, and I've not found it to be a problem. So the only weird part about it is this doesn't have a model number. This doesn't have a model number, so you end up ordering it by sight. <laughs> uh, like I said, they all, from what I can tell by looking inside, they're all made by the same manufacturer. These have different bodies on the outside, but the boards are always the same. So one more thing I wanted to point out about this is hooking the the RS-45 control lines. And on the back of your DVR, you have something similar to this. There's only two, there's four on this, but two, two of them are identical inside, so it's plus and ground. For a lot of these cameras, pl uh, the blue is plus, the yellow is ground. Um, on a four, four, um, RS-45, it's a voltage differential meant to be used for twisted, pa twisted pair. Okay, so uh, it is current mode. So, you know, it is current. And uh, it's switched on and off. Okay. Now, the thing of it is, is that uh, there's a couple points um, as far as ground concerned. You need to make sure that you've got these things at the right polarity. You can't flip them around. Okay, RS-45, the driver itself might be isolated. But in order for this to work, you know, somewhere in your system, you have to have a termination resistor if you're going to have multiple cameras. Now, if you if you go on the internet and you type in, um, you know, RS-485 uh, termination, it'll show you the diagram that shows you how to do this. You have to put a resistor in basically somewhere up in this area. If you run a huge line, you have to put another terminating resistor at the huge line of cameras you've got. Now, that being said, um, RS-485 is multi-drop. So these all kind of look like they're in parallel with each other. Like you're taking this and you're tacking more of them and more of them together. Okay. But that's only if you have a terminating resistor here. <laughs> you just can't, you know, uh, run a wire, two wires out here and then bind them all together in parallel off of this block. It won't work. Okay. That's not how that works. You have to have a terminating resistor here to set a minimum amount of current for this thing to switch on and off to see the current change. Okay. Now I've seen people take them and all daisy chain them. You know, they'll take each one, they'll go blue, blue to yellow, blue to yellow, all the way around, matching polarity till they get back here, and it's in series. Sometimes it'll work, for the very, da very damn wrong reasons, <laughs> you know. Um, and it'll drop you, drop it'll drop you down when you don't, you know, humidity in the air, dirt, who knows what. But you'll know, be if you don't know what information I just told you, you're gonna be hunting around up in your eaves trying to figure out where it's shorted or something, and where it's not connected. It has nothing to do with that. It never was working to begin with. You just didn't know that the setup was wrong until it failed. Okay, like a lot of things. So what you have to do is, like I said, if you look up uh, RS-485 on the internet and look, look up RS-485 termination, it'll show you a diagram. It shows you how on, on a two-terminal block, I guess, which is basically what RS-485 is. You come off the two terminals. How to, how to put a resistor here to do a termination and how to go all the way out to the other end on a far reach, which I would suggest your farthest camera away has to have another resistor on it. Okay. So um, just go ahead and, and think about that and, and look the diagram up. If you've got any questions, you know, I'll, I can you, can you can read a lot and figure it out. Uh, like I said, basically you're going to need a load resistor here. And I can't remember what the value is. Look it up. They'll show you. Um, and that is a ground reference termination. Internal has two resistors that are also ground reference. So you do have to have a polarity here and you have to obey it. <laughs> just telling you. You flip the camera, if you flip these around... The RS-45 circuitry might be isolated, and it might work well for the wrong reasons until it doesn't. So you just need to be careful about that. So I just wanted to tell you about that so you know how to hook these up and not have them fail for the wrong reasons. It's the same. So there you go. Like I said, anybody has any other help, helpful hints to help people, go ahead and post them you know, below. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty much dried out on my Pelco information, but like I said, it took a bit of uh, work to get this far. If anybody else has um, anything else to contribute to add to the... Add to the open source content and the knowledge, uh, feel free to post it. Thank you.